I'm gonna try to hammer the rudder shaft down. All right, so we're gonna bring you guys in on this debate. I'm going for perfection. He's going for just good enough and we're clashing. You know, I just feel good about going 110%. Okay, we're gonna lift up and out. What was wrong with our rudder? Why was it wiggling like a loose tooth? So this was the reason, the main reason why we dropped the rudder. <laughs> going to Florida. Day one. Gonna go buy a boat. This is the first sunset we're gonna bring in under sail. Tony and Jared, they left. Um, I just joined the bums here. Ah. What would your days look like if you were living the adventure of your dreams? Hey there, welcome back to Bums on a Boat. My name is Michael and this is Joel. In this episode, we've got a wiggly rudder, some special guests join in to have a look. Now, during the process of discovering what's wrong with our rudder, we figure out what failed on our autopilot while Michael and I were sailing here from St. Thomas. We actually do get to the bottom of our rudder problem, um, but then the classic battle of good enough versus perfection ensues. You know what that means? Joel and I were going head to head. I'm going for perfection. He's going for just good enough and we're clashing. We're meeting in the middle. There's some conflict, but um Well, a friend of mine I think was it's all uh, for the better. passing in the boatyard and he's like, Joel, remember, women are always right. And I just I just don't know about that. You know, I, I, I can't say that that's true. Uh, what comes to mind is Bonnie and Clyde for me. And I'm thinking, okay, Bonnie's a woman. She was choosing to rob banks. Was that right? That would mean she was right. I think Thelma and Louise might be a better example well, here. Maybe Clyde talked her into it. Whatever the case, she was robbing banks. Was she right? All right. If she was wrong, then that just proves the whole thing that women are always right. All right, fair point. But I think right and wrong is a matter of perspective. You know, it's subjective. So then we're going to get on a whole nother topic. Let's just get into the episode. <laughs> yeah. Back in the boatyard. We're gonna start today with inspecting the rudder. I got uh, Ricky from Sailing Lady Africa up in the cockpit. So he's gonna help me poke around and he is highly qualified. He has uh, completely rebuilt a 1991 Dean Ocean Liner catamaran and they basically bought it and it was uh, a shell of a boat. So he's rebuilt everything. So. You were basically poking around a little bit down there. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts coming in to this? I think you just got loose steering. Either that or then the main shaft is loose on the on the internals of the rudder. We'll open up the access here on the back and we'll move the steering wheel and see if the shaft's moving or in fact if the shaft's actually just staying still. And the rudder is, so if we're getting rudder movement but no, sh if we're getting shaft movement but no rudder movement then we know Got to drop the rudder and split it and epoxy it back together again. Basically, that would mean it's rotted inside the rudder. Yeah. yeah. It, it's quite common to happen, especially on older boats, but no major to get it fixed. It fix it quite easily. Can you definitely lost one of the brackets on the autopilot. Your clamp came off. So these, there's a little bit of a little bit of play in these, not not too much. And then the autopilot, this one, this one cable was complete. Well, this cable is out. I'll take it out to show you. So that's what happened there. See, that's completely loose. And that was attached on the end of that, but you can see this, this is loose too. And so that, that's what failed and that's yeah, why it was turning to one direction. It popped out on one side. And then this bracket just gave way. We're looking at the top of the rudder shaft now and Ricky's down below. We're just confirming that it's not loose cables on the quadrant. It's, um, it's some sort of a problem with the internal parts of the rudder and the shaft. So what we do is when you look at the top of the shaft here, I'll have Ricky 
wiggle the rudder side to side. It has that like inch or two of play. And we'll notice that the rudder shaft is not moving at all, which means, you know, it's either rotted inside or whatever the shaft is fitting into is, um, it's probably rotted. Go ahead and wiggle it side to side. Yeah, I'm wiggling it. You're wiggling it now? Yeah, see the rudder shaft. If you film this from down here, you'll get a good perspective of what it's doing. Guys, I'm gonna turn the wheel real quick. You'll see how when I turn the wheel, you see the shaft moving. That's all good. It's just there's a little bit of play. The only big concern is there's usually tabs across here. So you've got your inner housing over here where the, where the shaft goes through and, and it's keyed onto it. And then you've got your tabs that come across. And um, in most cases, you wouldn't worry about it. You'd, but you don't feel them knocking inside, you see? Like, I, I really don't feel them. So I'm wondering if you got that much play because of the key or because of one of those fins have come loose. Now, if you get water in and she does start eating away, she breaks the tabs off, then you literally just have the rudder completely loose. You wouldn't be able to do anything at all. But you see, when you, when you push it side to side, you want to put your hand on it and hopefully one of those tabs would actually be hitting the outer skin of the of the rudder so that you could actually feel that the tabs loose inside and you don't feel that so hopefully it's just a lot more hopefully it's more minor but as you she sounds a little hollow but she she's not wet she doesn't sound wet at all she's really really not there like a couple of points you hit like There she's solid. There, something's there. And she goes high again, so she's hollow there. There she's solid here again. I bet you she's got tabs in here. Over there, over there, and somewhere here. in the boatyard. I got Michael with me today. Based on Michael's recollection, she says this rudder shaft looks like it's up a little bit. And that's kind of like promising. So first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go have to go down below and dismantle the quadrant so that the rudder shaft can move up and down freely. And then I'm going to try to get, I'm going to try to hammer the rudder shaft down before pulling it up. And maybe the rudder shaft somehow just scooted up a little bit in the rudder and that's why it's given it this play. And maybe if we get it all the way down into the rudder, the key will fit into the keyhole and we won't have that play, in which case I'm gonna vote to leave the rudder on. What we need to do is remove this nut here and that's gonna release the tension on, oh, Michael Squirtin' PV Blaster. Oh, is it coming down? Yeah, yeah. that's going to release the tension here. I have to say I'm super impressed by Joel and how calm he's gotten with this um, mechanic stuff. The first time we were in there dismantling the steering and dropping the rudder, he was like, you know, <laughs> breathing deep, cursing nonstop, just really amped up and like frustrated. And that energy was just like, whoa, it was a lot. And this time he's just like, he only makes a sound when he needs a tool. And he just says, Michael, I need a tool so calmly. And then I get the tool and then he's back in there just cranking wrenches, like no big deal. So there's these two little nuts and bolts that hold the quadrants together. And those are hard to get to, but we got those off. And uh, these ones here are by far the easiest to access and to undo of all of the uh, nuts and bolts on this system, at least for us. So there's the key. See that? It fits in that slot there. 
Rudder shaft is free to move. I've got this little uh, old zip tie. I just measured the highest point of the rudder shaft. I'm gonna take some wood, and first I'm just gonna see if I can't hammer it down. Now, uh, the pedestals, or the quadrants, they did seem like they were up a little higher than I remember. So the top quadrant, which goes to the main steering, seemed like it was touching the bottom of the cockpit sole. Uh, and I remember there being a little gap there. So I don't know how this would have happened, but maybe the rudder shaft just skewed it up a little bit. Not surprising, Michael was right. The shaft had come up about an inch. It went down quickly, which fixed the wiggly rudder problem. All right, so we're gonna bring you guys in on this debate here. Michael's texting, but basically we fixed- Phone in a friend. Yeah, we fixed the problem, the original like loose tooth rudder problem. Um, but there's there's rust coming down on the skeg and Michael's like, yeah, well, I think we should still drop the rudder and uh, sand and clean that area where the iron bar is. Yeah. And uh, fiberglass over it. And uh, I want to, I'm not sure if it's integral to holding up the rudder. I'm going to go down and make sure. Um, but the rudder is kind of like held on by uh, like brass fittings. It screws into the bottom of the skeg. And I could be wrong, but I think that the piece of iron that's gotten exposed on the inside of the skeg is like a big piece that goes all the way down to the bottom of the rudder. And that's what the, or the bottom of the skeg, and that's what the fitting on the rudder screws into. It's my guess. She's guessing. And this guest could take an extra two weeks of work here in the boatyard. Yeah. So what do you guys think? It's an expensive guess. So the first time we dropped the rudder, well, the only time we dropped the rudder a couple years ago, we noticed that when you take all this hardware off, basically what it all attaches to is a piece of like iron, steel, I don't know, metal, that's flush with the bottom of the skeg here. So what makes sense to me is that that is part of a larger piece that goes up the length of the skeg. And that's what you can see inside here that's gotten exposed and is rusting. And that's where the rust color comes from. And last time we didn't really want to drop the rudder while well, I was advocating for dropping the rudder and Joel didn't want to. And even though it took more time, it ended up being a good idea and I think, you know, since we've already done it once, it'll be faster, easier this time. And plus, you know, I just feel good about going 110% and making sure we have that peace of mind when we're out there sailing. You heard her. How could I argue against that? She had reason on her side. Maybe women are not always right, but I'm starting to think Michael is. Anyways, it's time to wrestle the shaft up out of the boat. All right, Ricky got to do the honors while I was down there sweating away sweating. with the sander. You did the heavy lifting. But really, uh, there was just this section here hey. that was uh, down, gunked up. And uh, oh, yeah. so I just used sandpaper and sanded oh, it down. And then it was able to come up out of the cockpit. So this was not near as hard as it was the first time we removed it. Yo. Yo, what's up? <laughs> you, miss, you, you missing the boat work? No, not at all. <laughs> no. Not at all. I'm not envious of you guys right now. Simone, Ricky's other half from Sailing Lady Africa. It's me. I'm not sure why they snuck up on us here in the boatyard. We were to make sure you guys were we working. We came to <laughs> Just to make sure we were working, okay. <laughs> Are these bums actually doing anything? Actually coming out pretty They're going to a, a nice like uh, drink, a sip and paint. We were gonna go, but you know we just. I heard you guys are going. If we drop the rudder in five minutes. If we get the rudder off in five minutes and clean the boat up, but we we got to get this rudder completely off before we call it a day. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Ricky moves fast. <laughs> they coming out easy? Kind of. Dude, I reckon those two bolts are holding this thing. They look like they're screwed straight into that. I'm telling you. It's a little and then weird. There's one on it's, it's just the cap. There's the one on the front, but. Oh, yeah, I forgot about 
Yeah. All right. Any wagers? So who who's gonna well, bet against <laughs> Ricky? And who's gonna bet for Ricky? These two and the front one come out. That's attached to the shaft, and hopefully that will just pop this off. And we shouldn't there. have to remove anything else. We shouldn't have to move this base. Okay. He might be right. That would be funny. He was. We're like, no, 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 listen, this is our boat. We've taken this off before. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a little wedge. Yeah, there it goes. Yep. Ah, so there's four is, more bolts there. What holds it on, yeah. Yeah, that's just... Can we get, can we get that uh, on camera there? <laughs> it's a loss. She's bolted at the bottom. That's good news, though. So that's purely a uh, hydrodynamic. Yeah. Okay, we're going to lift up and out. Okay. So this was the reason, the main reason why we dropped the rudder, because we saw the exposed metal. Yeah. We thought it was iron, but you're saying it's stainless steel? Oh, that's no doubt that's stainless. You see how it's shiny like it? Mm-hmm. Iron wouldn't have done that. That's stainless. And you're saying it's rusting where the welds where the are Where the weld at? is, because they didn't post well treated. So then it does that. So yeah, yeah. you could clean it up and fair it up again. And then just fiberglass over it? Fiberglass over it as a, as a barrier layer. Yeah. Like thin cloth, and that'll be good. It'll be perfect. You'll never see that again. So, and this is just going all the way down. That's what it's screwed into. It could be a tabbing post yeah. that it's screwed into. We don't know. I don't it know how the, the inside way. is built, but yeah. I imagine if it's gone down here, yeah, they've used it all the way. Are you excited or what, Lola? Look, yeah, we took the so rudder off. The boat's in pieces again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> We're gonna be in the boatyard forever! <laughs> well, I guess we gotta go sip and paint. So we came here to Paradise Beach to hang out with Simone and Ricky of Lady Africa. They do a sip and paint Deal where they give you paint and a board and you can paint your boat name on it and so I think we'll do that at some point but we're a little late today so we're just here to enjoy the sunset and this gorgeous beach which is so appropriately named and yeah kick a few back <laughs> that's nice guys oh thank you for the compliment inside she's like yeah I was painted so by a two-year-old <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I could do better put it on the barbecue so how does this work? So Ricky wants to put ours in a special place. So tomorrow we're gonna have to come with our drill and put everyone's up. So, so are they gonna like actually light this barbecue, burn yeah. these things? No. <laughs> oh, so they just set them I up there. I didn't put that for... much effort in to burn it. I didn't know. I mean, I thought maybe it was some technique. Yeah, no. We just have to put it here for it to dry and then we can hang it up. <laughs> First try. First try, yeah. Did you see that? If you ever like just get so caught up in the grind, like you gotta get the boat work done, or you're so focused on your job to make that paycheck, you kinda lose sight. I feel like we were just just grinding away, knowing that we had to do a bunch of work to get to the next step, to get back in the water, to do the next thing that we wanted to do. But once you put yourself out in nature a little bit, even if it's just a walk in the woods, obviously this paradise beach is about as good as it gets, as far as I can tell. But man, I'm just pinching myself. Like this is where we live. This is part of our life, like this place, this planet, it's so beautiful and so underappreciated when we get stuck in our daily routine. Oh 
look at that. Isn't she beautiful? She's off. So in this situation, Michael was right. I have no problem admitting that. Yeah, I think we definitely needed to drop the rudder, especially after dropping it and looking at some of the hardware and getting a closer look at the skag. It was the right call. I'm not gonna go so far as to say women are always right though. <laughs> That's it. But when we're fixing up the boat, different topic. You know, we had some talks about our goals, and we want to sail Shock Mate across the ocean. But just as much as that, we want to gain the skills in order to fix, to be able to fix our boat, to have the self sufficiency, to handle anything that she might throw at us. Yeah, and we want to give ourselves the best chance when we're out there sailing. So Michael's yeah. point was like, look, that's going to be in the back of our head. What if the skeg fails? What if the rudder drops out of the bottom of the skate because it was all rusty? You know, we could have fixed that. We were aware of it and we just left it. Are you kidding me? You want to do that? And then I felt stupid. So what was wrong with our rudder? Why was it wiggling like a loose tooth? Well, this shaft slides all the way down into the rudder, kind of like Excalibur sword. And what happened is somehow on our sail here, it had gotten scooted out of the rudder about an inch. And this bottom part of the shaft here, you can see it's square and that fits into a nice little slot, nice and snug, so that when you turn the rudder shaft, the rudder turns. But some, when it got scooted out, then there was some play inside of the rudder, and that's why it was wiggling without the shaft wiggling, which was a much better scenario than right. we thought we were, we were facing. A pretty quick fix, but I don't know why it scooted out in the first place or like what we can do to prevent that in the future. Yeah, so... Big thank you to Ricky for coming up and uh, helping me take a look. And Simone, she didn't really get in the locker or do a lot of the boat work, so I can't thank her for that. But we had some great talks and we really loved hanging out with you with those guys. They're so awesome. Yeah, I can just say thank you for hanging out with yeah, us. Yeah, and you guys Simone. should head on over to their channel. Hit subscribe, leave them a comment, tell them the bum sent you. And stay tuned, keep watching. We're gonna keep giving Shock Mate all the love she deserves. That's right. No matter what it takes. Now, maybe we're gonna have a little bit of a battle of perfection again. This this was an obvious one, but maybe we'll encounter some other things where it's like, ah, through holes, they you know, they're only 30 years. I think we can leave them. They don't look that bad. Well this the through holes are bronze, but we definitely need to replace some seacocks. I don't know about definitely. Let's hold off on that. It's a too soon to say. Let's just Take it one step at a time here. All right, well, what's next? You'll have to watch to find out. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna find out. Nope. You're not gonna know, and you guys have to stay tuned. <laughs> it's right. just more love in the boatyard. Who knows? I mean, I thought we were gonna be sanding the boat, and next thing you know, we're dropping the rudder, taking our whole steering apart, having a battle of, you know, perfection and good enough again. It you know, so clear. I'm not gonna tell them what's happening next week. I don't even know. If I knew, I would tell you guys. Good work, babe. All right. Let's get after it. These are the tales of Boab. B-O-A-B, baby, B-O-A-B, baby, B-O-A-B.